uh, welcome everyone uh, i on behalf of vpwa welcome everybody uh, for this uh, uh, wonderful uh, webinar organized by vpwa uh, i am on the onset i would uh, welcome dr pr vinod kumar ji uh, who has given his valuable time uh, for the association to uh, uh, to deliver this lecture uh, i welcome him uh i also would apologize for the shortcoming that we were going live on youtube but due to some technical glitch uh the youtube live session will not be happening where but the recording of the webinar will be available on youtube so uh, i request everyone to please have a patience hearing and uh, uh enjoy the afternoon i would hand over uh, the podium to dr akoli ji who is our president thank you akole sir you are un please unmute yourself hello yeah. it's not audible now yes it is audible now okay. thank, thank you, you thank you thank you good afternoon everybody all my sweet friends ladies and gentlemen i dr manohar akole president for vpwa having immense pleasure to introduce our today's speaker dr p r vinod kumar he graduated from manuthi veterinary college in the year 1995 pg in small animal medicines thereafter joined a milk cooperative union as emergency vet doctor just after his passing out initially he worked in government service and switched over to the pet animal clinic he is having a 25 years pet Ah, yes, now it is okay. He worked in different district headquarters, hospitals throughout the state with the modern diagnostic facilities. Then he joined a very busy pet clinic in Jeddah, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. After returning KSA, he started his own multi-specialty clinic. You will be happy to note, till date he handled more than four lakh seventy-five thousand clinical cases of dogs and cats, more than one thousand five hundred. surgical cases at his record having good skill in diagnosing blood cancers in dogs and cats moreover he designed his own protocol for management of lymphosarcoma and leukemia in small animals first rate in the state to use and adopt knack fine needle aspiration cytology as the primary diagnostic tool in small animal medicines number of technical articles published by him in indian veterinary journal most of the vets associations are associated for his wonderful work he conducts training programs in ecg cardiology ultrasound laboratory technicians recently june july 2 2020 that means in last month itself he published his very nice second edition of his own book namely the art of pet animal clinical practice last but not the least friends he is blessed with wife professor bindu she is principal in the college daughter miss gayatri devi doing his doing her doctor of pharmacy friends let us welcome with a virtual round of applause today's speaker dr vinod kumar sir the platform is for you dr vinod kumar वेलकम सर यस सर कैन यू हियर मी सर यस सर यस सर यस सर ऑडिबल ऑडिबल सर नाउ यस 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 नाउ आफ्टर आफ्टर लिटिल बिट ऑफ टेक्निकल प्रॉब्लम नाउ ऑल द प्रॉब्लम्स आर सॉल्वड एंड नाउ एनीवे वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ वेरी नाइस सेशन इन डर्माटोलॉजी प्लीज सर प्लीज अ वेरी अनफॉर्चूनेटली वी लॉस्ट अबाउट 20 20 25 minutes now okay yeah, yeah. we will extend it for another 20 minutes okay let us no uh, let our uh, participants enjoy like anything because it is a very interesting subject and sir i now i want to share my screen from that the host has to enable me to share the screen yes sir i am i am i am enabling that uh dr 
Dr. Rohit here. Kindly am... enable me to yes. share the screen. Now it is disabled. I, I have made your host. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. Ah. Thank you. Uh, just, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Continue. Yes, good. Uh, uh, Vinod Kumar ji. Hello, Vinod Kumar ji. Uh, Kole, sir. Uh, Hello. And now, Hello. my dear friends. Ah, yes, yes. Yes, sir. Thank you for being with us, first of all. Now, good afternoon to all those who are in our room, especially our senior most members, Dr. Mahokasa, then all the leaders of the association. Now, I don't want to waste much of our time because even right now we have lost almost half an hour. But don't worry, we will definitely compensate this half an hour with the consent of our association leaders we will have to definitely extend a little bit time because the time allotted for me was one hour and let's stop it by by 4.30. So now, see this is the Herculean task by what I'm taking. The commonest diseases of cats and dogs and its field level management. What can I say? Which are the commonest skin diseases? All the diseases are very common. So, in fact, some of, some of them are a little bit very uncommon and some are extremely rare and some are rare. Anyway, I am going to deal with in a fast method of application of this uh, Zoom platform. I am going to discuss something about the very commonly found skin diseases in cats and dogs. Now, straight away, without spending too much of time, let me start. We all know we have different types of diseases like pyoderma bacterial skin diseases, viral skin diseases, fungal, parasitic, <clears throat> immunological diseases, endocrinological skin diseases, allergic skin diseases, neoplastic skin diseases. Out of diseases. In fact, there's one out in and differentiate all these bacterial skin diseases. So the bacterial skin diseases, the disease means pyoderma. Pyoderma means pyo means pus. Derma means the skin. So pyoderma means simply the word meaning itself is pus on the skin. But simply, can you say that pus on the skin? There is no pus on the skin. Sometimes you cannot see any pus on the skin. So, pyoderma means it is bacterial infection of the skin. So, in dogs and cats, we have the etiological agents like the bacteria. The Staphylococcus pseudendermidius is the commonest bacteria in the dog, but it is generally not found in the cat. And E. coli are found, Staphylococcus are found, Pseudomonas are found, Klebsiella are found, Corny bacterium are found. So many bacteria are there which produces skin infection on dogs and cats. But the commonest bacteria which can produce skin infection, bacterial infection is the Staphylococcus pseudendermidius. See, bacteria, they are very clever. If we are, we are introducing a new antibiotic, see, those bacteria will produce a certain chemical agents which will kill or destroy the antibiotic. So they can produce penicillinase, they can produce cephalosporinase, so penicillin is a resistant 
some bacteria which produces penicillin maize enzyme they will resist to penicillin some bacteria may resist by producing cephalosporin A it will destroy the cephalosporin body agree so generally you go we cannot know which antibiotic works because we are having a knowledge uh, which is in general so we can see the result in a week if we can we are giving the antibiotic we should see the result in a week and cats also pseudomonas not so common it's not found but e coli pseudomonas corny bacterium klebsiella etc can be found then according to the classification the pyoderma or the bacterial invasion can invade the whole layers there are five layers of the skin can invade the whole layers by layer by layer that is a vertical invasion or a horizontal invasion horizontal invasion means spreading a focal one or a diffused one a vertical one means a superficial one or a deep one okay got it so we have superficial pyoderma deep pyoderma focal pyoderma and diffuse pyoderma with that you can make different different combinations you can make a superficial focal pyoderma you can make a superficial uh, diffuse pyoderma you can make a deep focal pyoderma you can make a diffuse deep pyoderma so there are four types of pyodermas focal superficial deep uh, super uh, deep uh, focal focal superficial and diffused uh, superficial and focal deep and diffuse deep out of this the diffuse deep is very very difficult and it is very dangerous also because it can at any time it can uh, spread down to the all the other parts of the body producing a septicemia and this a uh, focal deep pyoderma is otherwise known as pyotraumatic dermatitis or hot spot or acute moist pyoderma and there are some other specific pyodermas is intertrigo that is lip appear skin fold pyodermas maybe lip fold pyoderma facial fold pyoderma vulval fold pyoderma tail fold pyoderma these are very commonly seen yes, especially in wrinkled skin dogs like in the pug the bull mastiff the neapolitan mastiff the sharpie uh, see the um, the french bulldog in all these breeds they have a lot of wrinkles and in between the wrinkles you can see the intertrigo it means a, a infection in between the folds of the skin then you can see the callus pyoderma these are also specific pyodermas callus pyoderma which is forming on the callus over the friction surfaces then the acne acne generally which are seen on the chin of the dogs and cats then strangles so of course we are coming to strangles see this is focal focal superficial pyoderma only a small area the deep, only the superficial part is infected you can see you can see a pustule see this is a pustule which is a pus containing superficial eruption it is a pustule so go to this this again you can see you can see the pustule you see this is a pustule this is a pustule pustule all this is a focal superficial pyoderma it's only related to the superficial skin and now this is a diffuse superficial pyoderma in a diffuse superficial pyoderma you can see entirely the larger area of the skin will be affected but only the superficial area is affected but you can see the dried up skin the skin epithelial tissue the epithelial cell or the uh, subcuticular and the cuticular tissues you can see the dried up tissues the white dried up it is known as epithelial collarets if you see epithelial collarette on the skin it means it, it is a superficial pyoderma okay so this is a diffused superficial pyoderma extended to a very uh, more uh, areas of the skin that is extended also diffused superficial pyoderma and this is another case of a diffused superficial pyoderma where you can see the erythematous inflammatory areas and along with the peripheries you can see the epidermal collarettes okay now this is this is a callus pyoderma see you can see this is the elbow joint this is the point of elbow of the dog you can see the inflamed point of elbow that is a callus and you can see the pus which is oozing out through a sinus okay so it's not a sinus it's a fistula and you can see the inflamed and edematous uh, callus this so this is known as a callus pyoderma callus pyoderma is very difficult to treat because we know antibiotic if it or if it is pus contain no antibiotic will go inside you will have to open it excision you have to open it and drain it out so now opening in this area because you know what is always uh, see, you know extending and uh, flexing and so while flexion it will be gaped and so this is very common and so this is callus pyoderma and we will we'll go to the next that is the intertrigo intertrigo or the 
skin fold pyoderma it is known as a skin fold pyoderma skin fold pyoderma you can see in so many areas see this the lip this is a lip fold in the trigo this is known as a lip fold in the trigo see this is a intertrigo pyoderma this is the skin fold pyoderma on the lip fold is an intertrigo pyoderma of the lip fold see this is an intertrigo 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 pyoderma of the facial fold uh, in the pug you can see the facial fold pyoderma it is very common in the pugs because pugs they used to feed into the bowl and they will always become wet and moist and always you can see it is it has a high tendency of infection and inflammation so that is an inter, intertrigo pyoderma or facial fold pyoderma this is a vulval fold pyoderma or a vulval fold intertrigo you can see the inflamed vulval skin folds it's a labrador and so the, the again this is a deep pyoderma so a deep pyoderma means a pyoderma which is involving all the skin layers i told that there are five skin layers on the dog okay and uh, if, if when the all the five skin layers are involved we can say it is a deep or a, a deep uh, a form of pyoderma so in this uh, picture you can see uh, the necrotic skin tissues uh, uh, the exudates in those all these uh, when there is a deep pyoderma inflammation will be more infection and inflammation will be more necrosis will be more and tissue reactions will be more there will be more intensified reactions where pain will be more and so a lot of toxins will be produced and toxins will be absorbed and toxins will be circulated and toxins can produce even fever and secondary infections and even renal and hepatic failures so we should be very much aware of deep pyodermas because deep pyodermas are so dangerous okay now this is another type of a uh, deep pyoderma where you can say it is a focal deep pyoderma and generally the client who says that sir yesterday it was nothing there at yesterday it was nothing but today when i woke up i saw this hot spot this is a hot spot or this is an intensified focal uh, deep pyoderma or it is otherwise known as an acute moist pyoderma we commonly tell it as a amp this is a hot spot and hot spot is generally an acute bacterial infection plus there will be some malassezia also yeast this is an intradental furunculosis so furuncul means it's a furuncul furuncul means it is inflamed hair follicles fur follicles and an inflamed fur follicle can join this known as a furuncul and if a furuncul start too many furunculs are conjoined it is known as a furunculosis and so this is an intradental furunculosis it is highly painful and the dog may be walking as if it is walking on the moon so too much of uh, if it is involving two uh, more than one limbs it will be walking as if it is walking on the moon okay so painful walking that is intradental furunculosis and this is acting in, even though it is the primary reaction could be some uh, bacterial infection apart from the bacterial infection some immunological reactions etc may come and at last the bacterial infection may subside but some cheesy exudates etc will be accumulated inside the bubbly mass inside so this is generally found on the underside of the cheek so chin so that is acne acne is seen acne is generally seen in human beings very widely seen in human beings and also in cats so see this is a feline superficial pyoderma you can see Uh, the superficial pyoderma on the base of the ear that is feline superficial pyoderma and here also you can see a diffuse pyoderma this is a diffuse superficial pyoderma see the diffuse superficial pyoderma see pyoderma means it is only infections due to bacterial organisms this is feline acne you can see the acne on the ventral chin area so etiology is same as in the case of dog and the next we directly we are jumping into dermatomycosis that is fungal skin infections dermatomycosis and dermatophytosis it is for fungal origin the trichophytans epidermophytans and microsporum trichophytans epidermophytans and microsporum are the three major uh, uh, contaminants which produces uh, dermatomycosis and microsporum is the most commonly found especially in the cat microsporum is very very common and microsporum has another feature it is highly zoonotic in nature we also may get the infection so microsporum see even it is said that even in on the cut fur of the cat or the dog the microsporum spores or the microconidia can live up to even 9 months intact 
So, and microsporum is, has another feature because microsporum is the only organism, fungal, or fungal organism, which will glow as a fluorescence in wood slime examination. I have the wood slime here. Mostly you also be having the wood slime. It's only a converged UV light. So, in dermatomycosis of dogs, we can see there are two major aspects. There are two types of, the two forms of dermatomycosis. One is acute reactive dermatomycosis and the other is the chronic non-reactive dermatomycosis. See, there are certain differences. In acute reactive dermatomycosis, you can see a rounded appearance. You can see the erythematous appearance. You can see the raised borders and you can see too much of itching, pruritus. So that is acute reactive form of dermatomycosis. And then there is, on the another, other hand, you can see the chronic non-reactive dermatomycosis where you can see no itching. A punched out appearance without itching. And you can see the skin is hyperpigmented. Like the other one, it is not red. It is not erythematous. And so this is the guy. It has no raised borders also. And so it is, this is the commonest one. It is a common chronic one. And this is dermatomycosis in the cat. It is uh, the main culprit is uh, the microsporum. And we have, uh, this is, uh, you see, the hyperpigmented, hyperpigmented skin with the pleuritis. And the facial areas are the mostly affected ones. And this is dermatomycosis in the cat. Sometimes dermatomycosis can infect the claw beds of the cat. So the claw of the cat, is, this is a healthy claw, you can see the white healthy tip of the claw and you can see the hook of the claw, you can see the white of the claw, you can see a, a red area, this is known as the core of the claw, this entire area. So this, up to this much area, the claw, the car is coming. So car is rich in blood supply. From there, new dead cells are arising and you can see the base of the this is the base, the body and the tip. And the tip is always curved. You can see the curve of the curvature. And this is the normal club, clot uh, bed. And when you see the infected claw bed, you can see the infected claw bed. When it is saying in human beings, it is nail bed. And in the dog or the cat, it is a claw bed. This is the claw bed. So you can see the soft tissue inflammation. It is edematous. It is highly inflamed. It is highly painful. And this is the, known as the onychomycosis. Onychomycosis is very commonly found in dogs and cats. See, this is the cat's onychomycosis. And you can see the dog's onychomycosis. See, the entirely infected and the chronic infect, infected, hyperpigmented, ichthyotic skin. You can see the end of the claws. And you can see the necrotic claws, the hyperpigmented claws and the skin. That is onychomycosis in the dog. See, on wood lamp examination, you can see the microsporum which is glowing. Sometimes you can see the, if it is microsporum, it is very commonly seen in cats. If at all there is a dermatomycosis on the cat, it could be microsporum. That is why we always say that we should be very cautious while dealing with dermatomycosis because it is highly zoonotic in nature. This is in wood lamp examination, this microsporum can be seen. And sometimes when you scrape the skin and examine under the microscope, you can see the fungal spores like this. But when you scrape the skin and examine under the microscope, you can see, sometimes you can see the microconidia that is pore like this. It is nothing but the microsporum. It is very commonly found whenever you see the scrape of the uh, cat, you can see always, almost always, I should say, this thing. This is the microsporum. This is the microsporum, microconidia which can be since the fungal spore only you can see that fungal mycelium hyphae and uh, the fur also can be seen this is a microsporum canis and trichophyton canis also can be seen the micro micro conidia can be seen there is a fungal spore can be seen like this all a segmented nature you can see like this these are all stained ones you can stain it with the methylene blue and uh, you can see this uh, trichophyton and this is this is uh, my uh, epidermophyton epidermophyton also the microconidia can be seen like this these are all very very uh, simple and very easy to recognize also okay and now those were something regarding the uh, mycotic infection the metamycosis then you can see the yeast infection now while going to the yeast infection you can see 
the commonest is, is the myelosis of acidermatis, then furfur symbodalis, globosa, restrictus, lufi, etc. are there. But don't worry about all these things. We are concerned mostly with the myelosis of acidermatis, which is the most commonly found uh, yeast uh, parasite. Yeast infection is very common. Generally, when pyoderma comes, pyoderma will be changed over to a secondary infection that is secondary dermatomycosis, and then it will be changed to a tertiary. Uh, malassezia infection, yeast infection. And this is a typical Labrador with severe malassezia dermatitis. You can see around the eyes, the periocular areas, in the perioral areas on the ear, entire, over, the, over the entire forelimbs, over the chest and over the lateral abdomen, uh, over the thighs, etc. You can see. In all the areas you can see. See, it produces a musty odor. And our pruritus is too high. Actually, true dermatomycosis is not so very common in dogs, but malassezia dermatitis is very common in dogs. But true dermatomycosis is very common in cats. And malassezia dermatitis is not so common in the cat. So that is regarding the malassezia infection and too much of pruritus is there, a musty smell order will be there. And you can, you can take an impression smear from the active areas. And you can uh, examine under the microscope. And sometimes malassezia dermatitis. See, ear canal is always an extension of the skin only. It produces one. Whenever there is a, a malassezia, is severe ear infection, uh, when there is a, a, a malassezia infection of the other skin, definitely there is malassezia infection of the ear canal also. So, treatment can be done inside the ears also. See, whenever you are taking an impression smear, you can see the human foot shaped organisms that is a, a spores of the malassezia but i should i will say that these are all indian closet shaped eh? it's truly this is indian closet shaped so whenever you see these organisms that is indian closet shaped organism uh, these are all stained with uh, methylene blue and whenever you see this uh, methylene blue stained indian closet shaped organisms in the impression uh, taken from a malassezia suspected skin then you can say that it is malassezia patchy dermatis. You will go to the management because now we know I am running. Uh, see, I used to take this uh, uh, common skin diseases in dogs uh, for continuously for hours together, more more than six or seven hours. Not continuously in, in periods of in uh, sequences like uh, six or seven hours. Then only I, have, I can complete. But now I am running and coming to the management of pyoderma. Different types of managements are there in different pyodermas. Maybe a superficial focal pyoderma, maybe a superficial uh, diffused pyoderma, a focal deep pyoderma, and a diffused deep pyoderma. All the treatments are different. In focal superficial pyodermas, need only topical application. For example, you can you can use a scavenger ointment, which is available from the Himalaya, or framycetin ointment that will do for a focal because there is only a very small area and only a superficial layer is affected. And superficial diffused form means it needs a benzoyl peroxide shampoo twice or thrice weekly with oral antibiotics like cephalexin is the best one. At 25 mg per kg BID for 3 weeks to 1.5 months according to the extension of the pyoderma. And a focal deep pyoderma needs, see, I already told that it can be uh, and see, more uh, um, complicated by yeast organisms so we can use an antibiotic plus ketoconazole so cephalexin or amoxclav orally with ketoconazole orally that is uh, the pyoderma then systemic infection then the coming to the diffuse deep pyoderma systemic infection is very common and so we should be very much aware of systemic infection so always don't leave the client give the antibiotic injection for five days followed by oral amoxclav for 10 days Topical sprays can be used, BID including chlorhexidine or cetrimide. Oral cephalexin will not be effective in deep diffused form of pyoderma. Only moxclav orally will be effective. So if needed, if you see that there is toxemia and fever, you go for IV fluids. For effective elimination of the toxins and early from circulation, restoring the renal function. That is very important. Chlorhexidine and cetrimide containing shampoos can be used on every alternate days. Then chlorhexidine, cetrimide, lotions, 
in see all these things is the skin folds the chest folds or the vulval folds all perineal folds all these things should be the perineal fold should be uh, opened and the fold should be clean and uh, the antibiotic ointment or the antibiotic lotion should be applied there especially in the pug uh, breeds like the pug etc diluted amic acid also can be painted on these areas diluted amic acid injection can be diluted uh, double diluted and then it can be applied onto the areas of infection these are the treatments of choice in pyoderma in the descending order the first one that is the injection we can go for cefovesin injection at 8 mg per kg subcutaneously every 2 weeks cefovesin injection at 8 mg per kg subcutaneously every 2 weeks see all the cephalosporins i always uh, insist i always advise my fellow vets always to use cephalosporins subcutaneously only whether it is cefovesin or ceftriaxon or uh, cefotaxime or whatever it be so furoxime you give it a, a subcutaneous injection only because it, if it is if cephalosporins are given intramuscular it will cause too much of pain and sometimes even acute inflammations so go for cefovesin injection 8 mg per kg a subcutaneous it every 2 weeks it is very expensive then amoxicillin and sulbactam amoxicillin and sulbactam injection can be given at 20 mg per kg im or iv ceftriaxone and tazobactam can be given at dose rate of 15 mg per kg iv or im or subcutaneously daily enrofloxacin can be given at dose rate of 5 to 7 mg per kg subcutaneously daily once daily once for 8 days all other cefovesin once in 14 days among sulb bid ceftriaxone and tazobactam bid enrofloxacin once a day and orally you can give cefalexin at 25 mg per kg bid orally for 25 days or even one and a half months moxclaw orally at 15 mg per kg bid or tid orally for 25 days to one and a half months that depends upon the cure that depends upon the response to the antibiotic erythromycin can be your 10 mg per kg bid for 3 weeks convenia cefovesin is very expensive one vial 80 mg per ml vial diluted with 10 ml gives uh, 8 80 milligram that is 1 ml per 10 kg injection is very uh, very expensive uh, more than 1000 uh, uh, rupees cefalexin tablets are available 600 milligram 300 milligram tablets are available you can give the tablet cefalexin oral syrup is available framycetin cream is skin cream is available on superficial focal uh, the pyoderma our non specific himalayas non specific scavenger ointment is available our benzoyl peroxide shampoo is available benzoyl peroxide is very effective against diffuse superficial pyoderma and diffuse deep pyoderma also but very effective against diffuse superficial pyoderma new pyrosin ointment it is an expensive ointment new pyrosin 2% ointment is available the creams are available it can be used over uh, so uh, uh, only focal areas if you are going to prescribe or if you are going to give mepirosin to be applied on very diffused areas the pocket of the client will be torn so better not to be given so it can be applied on focal areas then the same action fusidic acid see the mepirosin and fusidic acid have, have high penetration and they penetrate into the deeper areas of the skin then we have cetrimide containing uh, shampoos Uh, Myconazole cetrimide shampoos are available. Then we have chlorhexidine sprays are available. We can use against pyoderma. Then treatment against dermatomycosis. We have the chronic non-reactive form and the acute reactive form. In chronic non-reactive form, we can go for topical ketoconazole shampoo, myconazole shampoo containing chlorhexidine twice weekly retained for. This all these shampoos should be retained for three to five minutes. Then oral greasefulbin can be used ketoconazole. Uh, fluconazole itroconazole terbinafine etc can be used for a minimum of 3 weeks supportive such as omega 3 fatty acids containing syrups etc can be used in acute reactive form topical shampoo only once in a week as usual but oral greasefulbin ketoconazole fluconazole itroconazole terbinafine etc 
is necessary for three weeks at higher dose ranges. Now we will go to the each uh, type of medication. Grisefulmin was very commonly used. Nowadays also it is being used. 15 to 25 milligram per kg. Micronized and ultra micronized are used. The micronized you can give up to 20 to 40 milligram per kg. Sometimes 20, 25 to 30 milligram per kg also you can use. But ultra micronized should be used only 10 to 15 milligram per kg. And BID should be used. All these are grisefulmin, ketoconazole, fluconazole, hydroconazole, etc. All these things are imidazole derivatives and all these imidazole derivatives are hepatotoxic agents and so it should be whenever you are giving all these medications always you give a hepatic corrective along with it a liver corrective that could be much better and ketoconazole can be used at a dose rate of 10 to 15 milligram per kg see always you should keep in mind ketoconazole is a selective destructor of the Topical uh, cortisol producing cells that is a zona of fasciculata of the adrenals and so it can even produce Addison's disease That is why it is given as a treatment against Cushing syndrome So ketoconazole can be used at a dose rate of 10 to 15 mg per kg BID for three weeks Then fluconazole can be used 5 to 10 mg per kg BID for three weeks Hydroconazole, hydroconazole only OD once in a day at 5 mg per kg OD Terbinafin only once in a day, 35 to 40 milligram per kg OD for three weeks. These are the treatments against uh, dermatomycosis. Then topical lotions or shampoos, powders, etc. Clotrimazole lotion ointment powders, micronazole lotion ointment powders, shampoos, etc. All these things are well available in our market. You can choose according to your option. And always gold is gold, old is gold, old is gold. Thiabendazole, it is. The very commonly used anthelmintic, which was used previously, now it is not used as an anthelmintic. Thiabetes or lotion or ointment can be used against uh, fungal infections. Now it is an outdated therapy, you mean. Castellanis paint was used, it, still it is now an excellent one. It is very cheap. Thiabetes or Castellanis paint, which feels ointment. Contains 6% uh, salicylic acid and 3% uh, boric acid, uh, benzoic acid. And so, it also can be used, it's very cheap. But the problem is that the dachshund cat may lick it and may induce gastritis. It's salicylic acid, etc. Induce gastritis. And 5% sulfur ointment also can be used. See, I used to make all these things. We have gastritis paint. I have diabetesol powder. It feels ointment 5%. Because people, you know, they sometimes they need cheaper therapy. Some poor clients are coming. I used to give it. I used to prepare 5% sulfur ointment in my hospital itself. See, the gastritis is paint. See, whenever you are choosing the castellanus is paint, it should be given, it should be seen that it should, it is not containing phenol. Most of the castellanus is paint available contains 1%, 1.5% 1 phenol. That should be avoided because you know that phenol is an irritant to the dark skin. Then our good old it feels ointment is available, contains 6% salicylic acid and 3% benzoic acid, still being used. Thiabendazole is available in the field as 500 milligram tablets. So, all these things are available. This is available and now uh, Thiabendazole, but it is not nowadays used as, it is a benzimendazole like the albendazole, fenbendazole, mebendazole, carbendazole, carbendazole, etc. It is also a benzimendazole, benzimendazole anthelminthic and it is available as powder, benzimendazole, this uh, Thiamandazol powder is available. You can purchase it. It is a white powder. It is an anti-fungicide. It is a fungicide. And it can be used as a parasiticide. Otherwise, you can buy it like this. And, and this can be used. The powder can be taken. And it can be mixed to produce a 5 to 10% ointment. Can be given to your client. It's an excellent antifungal. Topical antifungal. The Whitfield ointment, you know this Whitfield ointment, this has keratolytic activity. But, but this is fungicidal. This is more effective. Thiamandazole is ointment is also nowadays not previously also it is available in the field. It is available in the medical shops. 5% ointments are available. Thiamandazole sprays uh, are available. Then you can get sulfur powder from the, from the store. 
sulfur powder or sulfur ointment also sulfur powder can be made into a 5% ointment with uh, uh, soft paraffin sulfur ointment uh, 5% ointment is available in the fields of course for people who want cheaper uh, treatments you can use this but beware that the dogs will lick it so nowadays we have the ketoconazole shampoo ketoconazole shampoo can, can be used as a topical antifungal agent but it has to be retained for 3 to 5 minutes then only it has to be washed off twice or thrice it can be used it can be used in a week myconazole myconazole is excellent it is also available as shampoos then griseofulvin tablets as 2 500 mg tablets and 250 mg tablets are available see a micronized form of griseofulvin and ultra micronized form of griseofulvin is available so ultra micronized form means the dose should be reduced to 10 to 15 mg per kg bid or this can be used of 25 to 30 mg per kg bid can be used ketoconazole tablet 200 mg tablets are available in the market you can use up to 10 to 15 mg per kg bid but the best application of ketoconazole is ketoconazole can be powdered in ghee it is well absorbed from the gut in an oil rich medium so it can be powdered and mixed with ghee and then offered no dog will refuse ghee so you can offer and also ketoconazole should be ketoconazole griseofulvin etc should be felt only in full stomach that means along with the food mix it with the powder it mix it with the ghee and then mix it with the uh, usual food and then give fluconazole uh, 10 to 15 mg 5 to 10 to 15 mg per kg bid for 3 weeks hydroconazole it should be given only once in a day 5 mg per kg once in a day for 3 weeks or terbinafine. Terbinafine, terbinafine is very very effective especially in the cat it is excellent but the dose and the frequency frequency once in a day dose is uh, 35 to 40 milligram per kg in relatively higher doses it should be good then we have our uh, sublimated our lime sulfur can be lime sulfur dip can be used is available in the market 25 ml per kg i used to i, I have my own uh, beauty parlor also for the dogs i used to give uh, this medicated bath for dogs with the lime sulfur it is very effective against the fungus against the modest canis etc then omega-3 fatty acid containing syrup it contains vitamin e omega-3 etc can be it's very effective for the skin rejuvenation then uh, malasis and dermatitis for that ketoconazole shampoo twice weekly and retained for three to five weeks if necessary Myconazole is not effective. Ketoconazole orally at 10 mg per kg once daily for 3 weeks. See, better in uh, small breeds, give once daily. Especially in Dachshunds, uh, Pugs, etc. once in a day. It should not be administered in an empty stomach. Preferably powdered in ghee, fluconazole, griseofulvin, etc. are not effective in malasis or dermatitis. And supportive drugs such as omega-3 fatty acids, Vitamin E, selenium, vitamin A containing syrups, etc. can be used. In malasis or otitis, it will be very painful. Don't try to attempt to put your artery forceps inside. You can sedate the animal, uh, irrigate it with the 10 drops hydrogen peroxide installation after sedation. And before that, uh, you should see that the tympanum is not ruptured by an otoscopy. So, by, see, you aspirate it and then uh, do otoscopy then find that the tympanum is not uh, ruptured after irrigation immediately after flushing agent with the tris edta like uh, edta containing edta technology solutions can be used then pull the pinna for even distribution pull the pinna and then immediately that instill the antibiotic ketoconazole tablet orally od for three weeks necessarily with oral uh, amoxiclavulanic acid these are the ear cleansers which can require hexidine containing ear cleanser which contains EDTA technology also can be used puppy strangles why they strangles strangles are generally they are infections not infections they are actually they are immunological reactions in small pups our two one or two two or three months of age they get this why the name came strangles because there will be very much a swelling of the two matches of swelling of the uh, submandibular lymph nodes and uh, subandibular lymph node is too much swollen and it will be strangulating the neck 
strangulating the trachea. That is why the name puppy strangles cave. So this is of immunological origin. Some, most of the textbooks say that there is no need of any antibiotic. But from my experience, my, my dear friends, I should say that you need always an antibiotic in puppy strangles. See, this is puppy strangles. Infections or the inflammations are confined only to the head regions. See the, the, the uh, ear, the periocular areas, the perinasal areas, the periauricular areas, etc. Gets the inflammation. You can see the chin. You can see the upper lip. See, this is another case of puppy strangles. You can see the chin is having, the upper lip is having too much cellulitis, highly painful. So this needs a corticosteroid. The management is or the oral corticosteroids, but infection is very common, so antibiotics are essential. And if the lymph nodes have become too large, you incise it and drain the affected lymph nodes. The pus can be drained off, local dressings, beware of maggot infestations, keep the puppy indoorally. Then we are coming to mange. We have the demonetic mange produced by the demonetic scanies, the mite. We have the follicular mange. We have the cellulitic mange, three forms, follicular, cellulitic and crusty. Follicular available, otherwise known as follicular, juvenile, superficial, red mange. Generally found in small pups um, below six months of age. Then we have the, the commonest form, pyodemodicosis, infected demodetic mange, that is cellulitic or deep demodetic mange or pyodemodicosis. Then we have the crusty or the chronic or the uh, rarest form of demodetic mange, which is very commonly formed after a chronic reaction. Follicular are commonly seen in young animals below 5 months of age. Although superficial skin is affected, follicular diffused, mostly no secondary bacterial complications. Pro no, there is no pruritus. Generally, there is no pruritus. Very commonly seen in German shepherds and pug. Lesions start from always the head. And then to the limbs, finally the trunk skin. Then the infected form, that is cellulitic form. It invades the deeper layers of the skin producing cellulitis. There is skin edema, secondary bacterial complications, there are purulent discharges from the pores on the skin, mostly terribly pruritic and self-inflected injuries are very common. May produce septicemia and commonly seen adults. It's very common. And this is a very rare form. You can see the scaly or crusty or the chronic form. And when the primary superficial form arises, Sometimes, if it is left untreated, it will go to the secondary form, that is the cellulitic or the deep form, or the pyodemodicosis. And again, if this is untreated, sometimes due to the immunity, it forms a transfers into the chronic form, that is scaly form or the dry form or the crusty form. That is why nobody is there to treat the uh, street dogs. That is why we see this chronic form of demodetic mage in the street dogs. In the follicular mange, it just needs only amitraz topical application. And even if it is a form, it's a small area, that is a focal one. You can go for even 1 ml amitraz plus 15 ml liquid paraffin. Mix it well. And especially in the pug, you can apply with your forefinger. Gloved forefinger, you can apply it. 1 ml amitraz plus 15 ml liquid paraffin. Then pyodemodicosis. Needs amitraz lotion daily, ivermectin tablet daily orally at 600 microgram per kg for a month. Systemic infection is there, so antibiotic is needed. Injection for 5 days, with continued with oral amoxiclav for 10 days. Scaly or crusty or demonetic mange needs topical application of amitraz only once, only twice weekly. But ivermectin tablets daily orally for 1 month. No oral or systemic antibiotics are needed in the, the crusty or the dry form. Or uh, ketoconazole chlorhexidine shampoos, etc. can be used once weekly. Supporting therapies can be done. We, will, we can take the specimens for uh, diagnosing this uh, demonetic mage. Clean with spirit, apply some liquid paraffin, then scrape. While you are scraping, always use a blunt scalpel. Scrape keeping it on 90 degree. Not tilted or tilted, obtuse or acute, always in 90 degrees and then scrape. You paste a thin film of liquid paraffin and then scrape. And directly mount or indirectly mount on 10% potassium hydroxide. 
take a slide and put it the scrape inside mix it well with 10 percent potassium hydroxide one or two drops and then you can put a cow slide and then examine for the modex on a smear examination if you are getting only adults see adults are normally they are eight legged parasites but the larvae so it's a getting one adult after uh, going on examining five uh, screens so that is not uh, significant for go for five fields and you are getting only one nematex that is not at all significant because it is a normally found organism in the skin of the dog so examine and when you see uh, presence of more than two larvae in the adult person larvae are six leg see presence of more than two larvae in the field indicates actively progressing disease larvae are all six legged they have no eight legs i'll show you the picture adult are cigar shaped carrot shaped eight legged presence of one single adult might up to five fields are have no relevance at all then if you see larvae in every field it is highly significant so you can you can even you can you can take a scrape scrape on the skin or you can take a fold of the scrape and then scrape it fold of the skin and then scrape it or you can take a fold of the skin then squeeze it and you take an impression smear and then examine or you can pluck out some fur from that area and examine for the roots for these mites so i have seen that some students or some junior vets are using sharp blades for scraping it will only see you know inside the skin never use it always use only blunt blades that to the blade has to you always better to use a scalpel more than a blade so scalpel and then scrape keeping it 90 degree on 90 see this is skin surface place the blade like this and then scrape like this not like this if you are doing like this means it will be you will be incising the skin and if you are doing like this means you cannot get anything any material so it should be like this 90 degrees okay fur plugs can be taken take with the artery forceps sometimes you are going to sometimes the lesion is on the head of a biting rottweiler if you are going to take the or pull the fur from that rottweiler from the head that will be your last pulling better not attempt it you give the artery forceps to the client ask him to pull some he will pull and nothing will happen to him if at all it bites he will get the bite don't worry so this is a scanning electron micrograph of the demodex canis mite these are only these are all adult ones you can see the four legged mites these are all having four legs four on one side and four on the other side totally eight legs see when you when you should say that it is a highly reactive and infectious stage adult one the nymph one all are going to adult but you can see the larval stage is developing it has a three on other side Three on one side and three on the other side. Totally six legged. When you get most of the six legged parasites, it is a highly infective one. It's a reactive one. Reactive dermatic means. So if you use the follicular dermatic means, and you can see the thick and the skin. Another case of follicular dermatic means. Pruritus is uncommon in these conditions. See, this is another form of follicular dermatic mange, or we can call it is typically a red mange. So another red mange in your Neapolitan mastiff, you can see the typical wrinkled appearance of the skin, and inner trigos are also skin fold. Uh, that is, uh, facial fold inner trigos are very common. And you can see the peri orbital follicular type of dermatic mange before and after treatment. you can see the peri orbital follicular type another photograph is a peri orbital follicular type of if you see this type of lesions definitely almost 90% it is not not 90 so almost 95% sure it is 
demodetic means. No need of even scraping. You can take 1 ml of amitraz, mix it with 15 ml of liquid paraffin. With your fingertip, you can simply apply it once daily. Excellent. It will give you excellent result. Focal follicular type. And this is a chronic deep diffuse cellulitic type. Commonly, very, very commonly seen in uh, street dogs. This is infected from that is pyodomodicosis with secondary bacterial infection. Another form of pyodomodicosis. If you get this type of cases, you simply take a fold of skin, squeeze it well, put take an impression and examine, you will be able to see the mite. This is again pyodomodicosis. Another case of pyodomodicosis. See, this is pyodomodicosis, somewhat going to the crusty form. And pruritus will be much. Another form of pyodomodicosis or the cellulitic form of demodicosis. The same mnemonic scan is can affect the cats and kitten also. You can see the hypertrophic appearance of the ear margins, the face the planum, nasal, skin, etc. And the management of demotics. Of course, we all know the use of amitras. But amitras, when you are using, you should cover certain things. Amitras is a very, very, very dangerous drug. And amitras can be absorbed transcutaneously, especially in human beings. So, if you are asking the client to apply amitras, and this fellow is having diabetes mellitus. This fellow is having diabetes mellitus. So what will happen, you know, he will pour some amitras into the water. With his bare hand, he will dilute it. He will mix it. And what will happen? This will be absorbed transcutaneously. And amitras, when absorbed tra transcutaneously, it will go inside. It will block the insulin receptors. So what will happen? His carbohydrate, his sugar will not be metabolized. And otherwise also he is diabetic. What will happen? There will be a high level of blood and glucose. That is hyperglycemia. He may fall down. Who is responsible? You are responsible. Why you are responsible? You say you are responsible. I should say that you are responsible. Why I say you are responsible? You are not sticking on to the veterinary oath. What is our oath? We are keeping our hands like this and taking the oath every day. Why? Simply of what cause? For what? We are you taking it daily. We are taking it. What is it? Being admitted to the profession of veterinary medicine, I solemnly is here to use my scientific knowledge for the benefit of society through the protection of animal health, the relief of animal sufferings, and the advancement of veterinary medical knowledge. I will practice my profession conscientiously with dignity and in keeping the principles of veterinary medical ethics. I accept as a lifelong obligation the continual improvement of my profession knowledge and competence. See, all these three sentences we are taking as an oath, sometimes daily or weekly or monthly or once in a year. See, we are bound to educate our clients. So we have to educate, we have to tell our client that, see, this is gentleman, this is dangerous. Do you have diabetes? No. Okay, then better whatever you have diabetes or not having diabetes. Always use a glove and then dilute it, mix it up. Even otherwise also, it is toxic to some dogs, especially pugs. There is some sort of uh, uh, transcutaneous absorption in the pug. So you should be very cautious. That is why I said in the pug, the dilution, you see, normally we should be diluted. It should be diluted at 4 ml per liter. In the pug, you go for 7 ml or 10 ml per liter. That's better. And in the speech, it is toxic. The transcutaneous absorption is more in the speech. But in the Shivava, transcutaneous absorption is very common.
हेलो सर हेलो हेलो डॉक्टर हेलो 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 Please, please, uh, sir. Uh, uh, another twenty minutes are there, and please make the doctor always as a host. Unfortunately, you are host. That's why he is not in a position to do the uh, rest of the thing. Please, if you could do. Hi, hi. How how you? Uh, yeah, um, sound is not audible. It is not audible to anybody. Hello. Uh, Plus fifteen ml of. Liquid paraffin. Then you can apply on the face or the orthofocal areas. If at all you want to use it in a diffused form, eight ml per liter of water in the pug and also in the spits. And you should not use amitras on shivavas. Okay. My question was that. See, I always say we always say I will make contraindicated in regard to schoolies, sheep dogs, etc. Okay. Border collie looks like, just looks like a look like a mongrel dog. Have you seen it? So to overcome it, you have to study the breeds. Then we have our wonderful drug, the flu relander. It is available as Bravecto tablets by MSD. The uh, 250 milligram tablets are seen. The 250 milligram tablets are available. 500 mg 1000 mg 1500 mg 2000 mg etc are available all these are of different body weights bravecto tablet is very chewable palatable it is a chocolate and you can use this that is excellent then that covers all the mites especially demodex this is well effective against demodex give one single tablet one single bravecto tablet and then plus topical Um, therapy like uh, benzoyl peroxide shampoo followed by amitras application, or you can go for amitras tablets and amitras sorry, ivermectin tablets and ivermectin injection is contraindicated in some. Okay, then to avoid secondary infection, we can go for convenient this uh, cefovaxin injection, cefalexin orally tablets, cefalexin 300 milligram tablets are available. If it is a very huge rottweiler, you can go 25 milligram per kg. 25 into a 45, 50 kilogram weighing Rottweiler or a bull mastiff, what 50 kilogram weighing, 20, 25 into 50. That is uh, 1,250 gram milligrams. So you have to go for 1.5 gram bottles. That is more economic. Then we can go for cephalix in oral suspension. Pet bed shampoo is available again is for uh, against. Uh, See when you use pet for pet burn shampoo or uh, this benzoyl peroxide shampoo before you apply amitras, this will open up all the pores, and then it will enter. This amitras will enter directly. So I am so for again. This is very effective against uh, um, demodetic mange. Then against the pruritus, you can go for hydroxyzine tablets. You can go for uh, hydroxyzine tablets. Okay now. Uh, dose is 2.5 to 5 mg per kg bid or tid you can use nothing to worry because it is very effective against uh, pruritus then sarcoptic mange it is very common treatment is bravecto oral amitras topical antibiotics weekly washes hydroxyzine oral drugs sarcoptic mange in uh, this is ear margin sarcoptic mange in felines the sarcoptic mite you can see here sarcoptic mite where the legs are extended outwards 
the notoid drug mange in the cat is all very common whenever there is autodactyls inside the ear canal always when seruminous otitis are present in the ear of the cat take out some way, swab and then examine under the microscope you can see the autodactyls anotis treatment is cleaning of the ear and examination swab for mite in all seruminosis in cats weekly ivermectin injection topical sulfur lime dip other topicals not to be used in the cat amitras everything are contraindicated benzoyl benzoyl all these things dilute some dilute some eucalyptus oil and you can drop into the ear canal it's very effective against autodactyls anotis then or got back got back which contains uh, permethrin it can also be applied to the ear then uh, chylatel i asguri that is walking dandruff it is also very common chylatel i asguri there are also this to find out to identify this is that there are two hooks in the mouth part that's why that's how we can identify it then my dear friends don't forget to uh, contact me in these phone numbers my phone number my calling number is 9847294339 my whatsapp number is 9496674339 my clinic number is 0495236539 so please write it down my dear friends you can feel free to contact me at any time so dermatology is my speciality <clears throat> then i have mentioned about my textbook this is my textbook my dear friends this is my textbook and uh, this is 420 pages textbook the textbook name the name of the textbook is the art of pet animal clinical practice it contains 420 pages full of pictures multicolored pictures it is printed in uh, art paper and lot of pictures are being included lot of information like this dermatology is a speciality in this book uh, and you can you can ping me in personally for getting i have enough copies of this book you can ping me personally you can get this book It's excellent all my ideas all my experiences everything i have uh, uh, written i have written this textbook after 3 uh, uh, years of continuous writings spending 3 years and all my practice my experience everything the knowledge i possess my experience everything is being written here so thank you now uh, so this is an open one and uh, i used to send it to my friends over courier by this is a close to this is a uh, this what is it it is a uh, sealed one laminated one and i used to send like this only nobody can op open it except you it's a laminated one and i used to send i can send it to you and so these are my phone numbers please write it down and now my dear friends bharat mata ki jai our country never can be defeated bharat mata ki jai so thank you my dear friends thank you all for being with us in this session actually in this session i was jumping through lot of conditions because i had only one hour in this one hour i have to uh, complete all those things it was a herculean task you know to differentiate all those things different different diseases really actually i have to take complete one day for this completion of this topic this is only a part of my dermatology uh, webinar a topic only a part and there are lot of other skin diseases are there to tell but these are the commonest ones so we can go deep into it now we are going for the discussions let us go for the discussions uh thank you thank you doctor sir and so now i am also i am again i am conducting webinars also i will please ping me personally i can get uh, the details of all my webinars my webinars are there you can come to me at any time my webinars are going to be one more one webinar is going to be um, conducted just two or three days uh, after this webinar andrew uh, you can come to me personally i will give you all the details yes my next topic of webinar is simplified form of ecg in uh, small animals now my topic is open for discussion let us discuss
my dear friends yes a lot of discussions uh, have come dr sarvi i think uh, you have uh, been and uh, dr sarvi yes dr arish uh, yeah can you hear me yes yes uh, let us uh, so, dr maga ji yeah. thank you for a wonderful session dr how uh, is it okay and uh, dr anushri definitely you come to me personally i will tell all these things don't let us dis- not disclose uh, on the, this platform all these things you, dr anushri you please come to me dr rajesh babu yes yes uh, please come to me please come to me dr rajesh babu let us discuss about uh, uh, the skin diseases now right now dr arush yes definitely please come to me personally i'll give you all the details of the book just i only short the book let us discuss about the skin diseases safest oral antifungal agent there is no such safe oral antifungal you know we have grisofulvin we have all these imidazole derivatives like grisofulvin ketoconazole fluconazole itraconazole terbinafen all these are very dangerous drugs all imidazole drugs are hepatotoxic drugs out of these the most hepatotoxic drug is ketoconazole and ketoconazole is supposed to be the most effective drug also what can we do so see, of course we can go for all these drugs nothing will happen if you are in the safest dose calculation of the dose depends upon the patient examination the liver function evaluation etc so and nothing to worry even in the cat it is cats tolerate very well terbinafine and ketoconazole how to use demoscanal dilution uh, dr rajesh dr rajat rajat ms okay uh, this uh, demoscanal can be diluted as a sulfur containing uh, sulfur lime and this has to be diluted in a dilution of 25 ml per liter 25 ml per liter it can be safely applied in this dilution to the cat as well as the dog nothing will happen very effective weekly very effective and uh, dr rajesh thank you then now dr ayush fluoralanol is safe to add yes fluoralanol is safe to administer but as the company says it is not advised to give uh, under 4 uh, months of age but even uh, our experienced doctors are there who gives it in 4 months of age nothing has happened differential diagnosis for pyoderma and demodicosis in demodicosis in follicular form demodicosis there will not be pruritus but for the complete differentiation actually we have four types of pyoderma the superficial uh, focal the superficial uh, diffused the focal deep and the foc- uh, diffused deep all these can be de- determined by a thorough clinical examination with the hand lens and otherwise if it is if you are suspecting the modex there you can go for a scrape then dr drishya when we don't have facility for skin care yes that is what i was telling if it was a complete dermatology class i would have pressed this point if it if you don't have a microscope there are different different uh, uh, areas and uh, private see, and, uh, government hospitals where there are no microscopes to so that areas you can, the eye of the dermatologist is the main tool with that itself we can say it is demodex of course in red mage or cellulitic demodetic mage crust demodetic mage of course all these things i have been normally about a month for demodex need no no doctor see the ivermectin the, the ld50 or the ld50 of ivermectin is always uh, 40 micrograms 40 uh, milligrams per day so a 600 microgram per day will do nothing no 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 and also the oral absorption of ivermectin is very slow so nothing will happen don't worry because i have been doing it for the last 25 years nothing has happened no don't or even in textbooks it is written seborrheic dermatitis treatment seborrhea we have two types of seborrhea dr vijay there are two types of seborrhea that is seborrhea oleosa and seborrhea sicca seborrhea oleosa means uh, the oily seborrhea the oily dandruff seborrheic sicca means uh, dry dandruff dry dandruff is always almost 90% it is it will be pyoderma and oily uh, dandruff mostly it could be malassezia and treatment also differs in pyoderma it is bacterial infection you can go for antibiotics and uh, oily oily uh, oily the seborrheic oleosa is malassezia you can go for anti malassezia such as ketoconazole uh, can uh, dr badwell surendra badwell surendra we can go for cefpet instead of cefarexin cefa you can go for cefpodoxin cefpet is cefpodoxin of course you can go for cefpodoxin and uh, when you are using cefpodoxin it is not much effective as you use uh, cefalexin but you can use for certain you can do it 
and you can wait for the uh, response. Hello, hello. Wet Afrid, Doctor Wet Afrid. Actually, this uh, actually I had to talk more about this, but unfortunately we are short of time. Uh, Doctor Madhuri, can five percent benzoyl peroxide gel available in human pharma and can you? Uh, Yes, the home human pharma topical, but see, they will generally they will leak it off sometimes. If it is areas which can leak, can leak very easily. This can leak it off, and those can this benzoyl peroxide when leaked off is a very typical irritant. It will produce profile saliva, profuse salivation, and also produces gastritis. So better if other options are available for you as shampoos, then go for pigment shampoo. uh doctor we also have few Post offline phone questions numbers. my phone numbers are there doctor yes uh, my phone numbers are there it is given there see hello this is my phone number i think you saw my phone number na no? now my phone number is displayed doctor my phone number my the demodicosis demodicosis in pop only uh, topical treatment then uh, with um topical with amitras if it is in puppy means it is very difficult the modicos is generally in very small puppies it is not so common because it takes long time aspergillus niger yes you can go for anti fungals and of course we have a lot of other atopy all these things my dear friends now we are in shortage of time and we will do one thing one thing see we can we can, i am ready to discuss any topic with you i am ready to discuss any topic not only dermatology you can ask me anything regarding pets cats and dogs and uh, uh, cats can anything especially this dermatology is my masterpiece subject you can ask anything you can personally you come to me you come to me to my whatsapp we can discuss anything you can ask me anything i am a person who is having 25 years of experience i have gone through almost 5 lakhs number of cases that is it see that is my that is that is it. i don't know uh, uh, how far i can deal with more number of cases that much number of cases especially in dermatopathy i have seen i can uh, disclose i can discuss all these things with you and i am ready to share all my knowledge and experience i possess my dear friends thank you very much and i thank you my dear friends very much for being in this webinar continuously for over one and a half hours and now i am passing off my turn to the organizers now to the organizers i thank all of my organizers of this uh, uh, webinar session especially dr uh, uh, manohar angole sir who is senior to me when manohar angole sir started his profession during 1974 i was a 4 year old child that much <laughs> junior i am to him thank you angole sir and thank you to all my dear friends Uh, in this webinar organizational uh, thank you thank uh, you doctor uh, wow. association thank you very much bye thank you. and i'm thank handing you. over the mic to my friends thank you thank you thank you sir uh, mm -hmm. i ask uh, request dr santosh sarvi to do the formalities yeah so good evening and the outside today's speaker dr vinod kumar please accept our sincere thanks from our bottom of heart for accepting our kind invitation and addressing our wait participants for today's webinar and we are also grateful to all the waits for the overwhelming response actually there was some issue in connecting uh, initially uh, so we apologizes for that and all i will be very happy to request wits to have uh, your more close associations by joining the bpw organization in near future organization also express thanks to the atish uh, to uh, sir for giving us technical support in all the respect for today's session so thank you once again uh, all including mc member so thank you thank you for that thank you dr vinod kumar thank you dr vinod vinod kumar ji and uh, we hope to see you for uh, such more interactive sessions uh, some longer sessions in the near future and we will be in touch with you for a similar probably for some blood work uh, seminars so we thank you
again for joining and thank you all the other vets who have joined and with this i declare the meeting as concluded uh, final note by the, our president dr akole thank you everyone once and all for the attending the seminar i can say that um, meeting is adjourned thank you once again dr vinod kumar for spending his time with us thank you hello hello